This is from a middle school teacher in Northern California. He was the teacher of the county teacher of the year, and yet he was thinking of leaving the profession. He, I quote, my frustration with teaching stemmed directly from the discipline system being used at my school. We were using a traditional carrot and stick approach in which punishment consisted largely of detentions, suspensions, and harsh words. And he continues. He heard me present at an association in the springtime. He wrote me the following after the beginning of the following school year. Mar, this year is a surprise for me. I had my revelation last year when I discovered the raised responsibility system. This year I have implemented the system from the beginning. And the painful revelation this year is, is just how wrong I have been over the past 13 years. It is almost painful to reflect on who I used to be. I was so caught up in getting students to obey that I lost sight of the humanity of this profession. I was overpowering them rather than being flexible, understanding, and compassionate. Here's an example. I have a student who doesn't do his homework and who struggles in class. Last year, he would have had several detentions from me and a failing grade. I would have forced him to come in to do his homework and we would have been in a power struggle. This year, I purchased several school supplies for him and have always had a kind word for him. I recently found out that he, that he is actually homeless and that he and his dad are living in a cheap motel. Recently, he has started spending his break time in my class, by his own choosing, doing his math homework. He also drew me some pictures on binder paper that he wanted me to have. It breaks my heart to think of all the opportunities I have missed for this kind of relationship with students. Teaching successful teachers have good relationship with kids. They encourage them by being positive with them. Yeah, always give them an option. If you want to do it, fine. It's going to be in your own best interest. If you don't, it's totally up to you. Sometimes you give them three options. And one option, of course, can be from, and what would you suggest? Notice what I'm doing. I'm also being prompting the extra to be reflective. There is no way that you can understand how successful this program is until you implement it yourself. Not just by listening to me. And my recommendation is, just choose one of the things I've shared with you. It could be teaching procedures. Focus on that for a while. Next week, think of positivity. If you, as a teacher, just spoke to your kids in a positive way, if you did nothing else, you would be amazed at the change in your kids. Next week, perhaps focus on, okay, what choices can I give in classwork, in homework? But always keep in mind, the influence of a person to change is going to be by the reflective questions you ask or by prompting the youngster to reflect. Going back to the race responsibility system, again, the only thing the kids need to know are these four levels which you can teach in the next school day. And the resource guide has a number of different ways that you can implement them. That is, you can implement the four concepts by books, by class discussions, or by the folding paper exercise that we did earlier. Since no discipline program is independent from other factors, please be ready to take some notes on what you have learned and implement it so far to make discipline without stress successful for you. Right now, there's three procedures you have implemented since our discussion on classroom management. Stop at this point and write them down. If you have the resource guide, make a note to look at page 96 and list at least one more of the list from the 30 that you will implement within the next five school days. Now feel free to use more and add more procedures. 
Here is a simple procedure I use. I chose one area in my classroom that I would walk to when I wanted the student's attention. I had taught the attention management procedure using the image on page 96 of the resource guide. Now, after I did this, after I walked to this one spot a few times, when I was almost at the designated spot, the students were already quiet because they knew that the spot was only used when I wanted to get their attention. Pause viewing and list three reflective questions you use with the students the last time you were with them. And remember to keep track of the time invested because if you want to get credit for the course, they will want how much time you invested because it requires 15 hours, which of course includes viewing this video, in order to receive one unit of credit. Now the resource guide has six pages of great reflective questions on page 54 to 58. Remember that you are always in control by asking questions. The person who asks the question controls the conversation. Now, to get you started, you may want to do what many teachers do when they first start. They'll take three questions and put each one on a large paper. Then they post them someplace in the classroom where they can easily see them. One may be, reflect on the level you are choosing to be used with students on level A or level B. Our next session will be what we will do after your students know the hierarchy of social development and repeatedly choose to act on an unacceptable level.